Welcome back, Sean Eckert, Adelaide Studios, and today we're talking about this right here. It is a uh, sub, a drum sub kick. Um, if you're looking at, actually, I'll put it up on the screen of what we're actually going to be doing first, and uh, we're going to build one of these drum sub kicks. This one, in particular, is from Yamaha, and uh, they sound amazing for recording uh, in the studio as well as live gigs it captures that bottom end uh, in this application that we're going to be using i'm going to be using a six and a half inch uh, mid-range subwoofer um, to capture you know this much of it rather than just capturing normally speaking you got this much of a capsule uh, sitting in your in your kick drum and uh, that's it that's your diaphragm size so that's all you're getting which is very um, conducive to the high end Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this six and a half inch speaker and we're going to mount that into this 10 inch tom. Now the tom itself is probably 12 inches deep and uh, I'm gonna to have to cut it. Actually gonna cut this almost in half just below this logo here and take all the hardware off, obviously clean it up and cut the hardware, I got to cut these two, this right here and right here, shrink that together and uh, be a little bit of screwing around there, uh, but just to make it a little more compact and uh, not so obtrusive. And why I'm doing this, um, I get a red little drum resonation here. Why I'm doing this is because these sub kicks, I get that hoom, you hear that hoom, hoom. There, it's gone now. Uh, these sub kicks are, um, they don't make them anymore. And Yamaha used to make a really good one. A couple other uh, dealers were making them as well, but I'm not sure why they're not making them or maybe I'm just not looking hard enough, but they're $500 to buy one. And my last drummer had one um, that I played with a long time on the road and, and recording, and they're just simply amazing. So, I am in a new project and I was talking to the drummer I play with now, uh, Chris, and he donated the shell for me. Um, so that didn't cost me anything, and which is great. And uh, I got a little XLR mail insert that I got on Amazon. I wish that this was metal um, because I'm, it's plastic and I'm just not sure how it's going to hold up. So I may end up having to change that out at some point. But I will drill a hole in the side of the shell and I'll mount that. Hard mount it so then you just take your XLR mic cable, plug it in and you're good to go. Um, the speaker itself, I'm actually going to pull this out of here. Uh, this is like a 450 watt speaker that I bought on Amazon. Sorry, 480 watt. Um, it, it's got a really decent sized magnet on it, which I think is going to be very crucial to the build. Um, it's, you know, it's got some, some good weight to it. Uh, and I, I, what I've heard from what I've seen online is you can pretty much use any speaker, but this, this speaker only cost me $55 Canadian. So, and I got free shipping from Amazon Prime. So that, so that was cool. So the build in, in total, what else do I got? <clears throat> oh, I got some fabric here that I'm going to, uh, here, I'll show you this fabric that I've got donated by my wife. It's it's kind of see-through. I don't know if you can see through that very good, but it's it's porous, and but it's it doesn't stretch very good, so I don't know how it's going to fit over top of the, <clears throat> the ring there. And uh, <clears throat> so then I, <clears throat> I got a, frog in my throat here or something but i'm gonna try this um i went out to the fabric store and i bought some spandex you gotta love the 80s right so i think the spandex where well, you can see through that you know you can see through that pretty pretty decent right and so this will actually stretch a lot nicer when i put it on there and it'll look like a, a more finished product so that's the idea. And then I've got to, uh, <clears throat> I got to cut a circle out of here because this is only a six and a half inch speaker <clears throat> inside a 10 inch shell. So I've got to template it out and, and so I can put it, this in to use as a baffle and a speaker support 
and then I'll hot glue it in there and uh, if I need to anchor it I'll anchor it but I don't think I'll I will need to so let's get to the build and we'll see you uh, once it's done good I don't know is it <coughs> okay now that we've got the uh, drum hardware taken off I'm gonna use this clamp or this tightener this is a piece of the hardware to put the head on uh, that sits in here like so so what I need to know is how far I am away from the lead edge to here and then measure out because I need to know where to cut the drum so as you can see right here I don't know if that shows up on that camera that good you can see right there it's uh, right here is three and a half inches so I need to measure out to seven inches and put my mark because that's where I need to cut it and why that is like that is because this needs to go on like this I need to pound two more holes here for that to sit in that needs to sit like that oops and then I need an inch and a half from here same distance here for my threading so I need seven inches and I know I'm gonna have a hole this hole is gonna be a bit of an issue um, but it's not a concern because the ring itself will cover that hole and it's not gonna be functioning as a drum it's gonna be functioning as a sub kick microphone but it's right in the middle of this hole is where I need to mark this and I'll do this all the way around so when I cut it I'll be able to get a nice straight cut there. Then we'll go from there. I'll be cut back to you here in a second. And then the next step is going to be cutting a baffle out of here that I can mount my speaker into. But I need to cut the baffle out of this 3 8 plywood here. So I'm going to, I don't know if you can get a good angle on this or not. I'm going to draw a circle for the inside diameter there's my inside diameter I'll go cut this out hopefully I can snug that go cut it out and hopefully I can just snug it straight in there and glue it in uh, with very minimal very very minimal um, sandy and we'll cut back to you I'm also going to find a location for my XLR male input here um, for my mic cable. So however I'm going to put that in here, I'll figure that out once I get out into the shop. Okay, I also took one of these, uh, one of these, I guess they're like an insulator that goes, used to go over the hole like this and uh and that will go on there like that so so I, I marked it right at the edge of this because i'm doing two of them that i have to right remember as you recall i'm doing this with it so i marked it right here cut it off and then flipped it around did the same on the other side so i cut this piece out of the middle and i ended up with that and this will allow me to put one on like this and the other one on like this and that's how it's going to sit that's how it'll sit on the drum right so that allows me to make a template for it and basically is what i'm doing so i will go ahead and throw that in there like that take my sharpie and draw my holes so that's where i'm going to drill and i'll go around the drum and do all these like this i may end up putting a wrap on this thing yet i'm not sure but for functionality purposes we'll just be, leave it like this for now all right time to head out to the shop and get this stuff cut up and we'll come back check back to you
Okay, getting down to the wiring. Um, the lighting's that good. As you can see, I got my XLR male uh, feed here or lead there, and I've marked it inside the drum. I've marked the lead, uh, positive and negative. Actually, when you look at the pins, this is pin one and pin two, and then pin three on the bottom. Uh, pin one is going to be the negative coming off the uh, speaker, and pin two will be the positive. So we have to reverse the polarity on it, which is why we're doing it that way. Um, you know, positive, so the positive off here is going to actually go to pin two on the XLR. Uh, so it reverses the polarity and turns the speaker into a microphone. Okay, I've got uh, my wiring. It's gonna be long enough to stick in there. I put, I've, there, it's both green shielded wiring. I'm not uh, too concerned about using two different colors. I'm gonna put some heat uh, shrink tubing on the positive terminal. And we'll just shrink that up just so I know what's what. It comes time to solder this on. Now we could put a resistor in here too. I'm not gonna do that because on my board I've got a minus 20 dB pad uh, because this is gonna be a really hot microphone. Um, you can buy you can buy uh, external XLR reducers for your signal because it's going to be a super hot signal. But uh, I've got it built into my board, so I'm not too concerned about it. Probably end up doing it at some point in time, but not today. Okay, that's on. Now I'll thread this through. Slide this out of the way. Thread it through the bottom. Same thing over here. Remember, red is uh, put the red on for the positive, so I'm gonna put it there and there. That's where they're gonna go. That's pretty solid. Then, flip this back over, put my speaker back in. Now, before I get too carried away, I think I should test it. Plug that into there. Let's see what I got here. I can tell it's already, already there. Super powerful. Choo, 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 choo. Yeah, it's already there, so. I do have a signal on my board. Um, we're good to go that way. Unplug that. Put my screws back in. Mounted. Wired. We're good to go in that regard all right final thing to do okay this is gonna go putting the bigger one on the front so it's got full area here to uh take the bass response from the kick drum this way i need to cut this may end up gluing that on there and again maybe not we'll see what we can do here to suck that on
all these got these little nylon caps on them i'm pulling them off a couple of them are broken so i'm just getting rid of them altogether. there will be no pounding on this drum that's for sure let's take her down too much kind of like a tire spare tire in a sense but i want to pull it right so i'll pull this side There we go. That is done. One side, two side. There it is, man. All done. Get her to rehearsal and try her out. Okay, there you have it. A 10 inch tom converted into a six and a half inch sub kick kick drum. Meant for some good rock and roll and uh, put it on the kick drum. See what she sounds like. I do not have audio samples at this point, but I will put some up once I get them.